Hello mate, thanks for clicking on this video, you're watching Video Game Subscription Wars, the channel that covers every game on every game subscription and today the Microsoft Games Showcase just wrapped up and while we didn't get any news on the console itself or anything about xCloud, the streaming service, there were a huge slate of new Xbox Series X games announced and the good news is that every single one is coming to Xbox Game Pass which is pretty fortunate for this channel, isn't it? Back in January 2018, Microsoft confirmed that all its first party titles will be released on Game Pass day one, but they're clearly doubling down on that with the next generation. The showcase included nine new games from Xbox Game Studios, but there were many more games announced that will launch as Xbox exclusives and every single one is coming to Game Pass. That supports other news stories that have been floating about on Microsoft's commitment to Xbox Game Pass for the next generation. In an interview with The Beeb, Phil Spencer even said that they're more focused on Xbox Game Pass sales than physical console sales. And a Game Pass subscription is all about the games. So I've got 17 new games to talk about, so let's get going and let's start with those first party titles. Halo Infinite is obviously the one we all wanted to know about and I've watched this footage over maybe five times and each time I get more torn on whether I like it or not. So in terms of movement and gameplay, it seems most in line with Halo 5, minus the booster pack, which is totally fine with me, while the art style seems most like Halo 1, I would say, which is also fine with me. The game looks great actually, and that's one of the major pluses from this gameplay. One of the things I'm not really sure about is that there's a grapple hook. Um, like the zip line into melee that you can see, or the zip line onto a ledge, and the zip line to grabbing a fusion coil and throwing that. It looks like something out of Titanfall or, or Call of Duty or Apex Legends. My point being, it's like all the other first person shooters out there. I hope that the grapple hook doesn't make its way into multiplayer, or this will not be like any Halo that we know of. Sure, they'll probably have playlists where you can remove it, but I mean, why include it in the first place if that's the idea? The other main departure is the open world, which gave the gameplay a completely different vibe. Um, I'm not trying to overreact, just because the reveal is fresh in my mind, but I think it's going to be so much harder to create the structure that we're familiar with with previous Halo levels. So on the map you can see that there are options to view missions and start missions, so you'll have to move to the certain waypoints to do that. So the gameplay we're seeing here is in the hub world, I guess you could call it. That setting takes place on one Halo ring, which is pretty cool, but I don't know, something about it just felt off to me. It kind of felt like 343 had catered to the trends of the time by going open world, but, but Halo didn't follow trends, it set trends. I, I just don't think there was any need to make it an open world game. Having said that, Halo is the biggest Xbox exclusive by a country mile, and they want it to showcase the Xbox Series X potential and its capabilities. Um, to be fair, the recent campaigns have been terrible, so maybe the open world will help. But that feels like I'm siding more with the business decisions than the creative decisions, if, if you know what I mean. So I'm, I'm torn. Uh, I could do a whole video on this, I'm sure, but I only really care about the multiplayer anyway at this point. <laughs> like Halo 4 and 5 did so much damage that it's too late for the campaign to matter to me, so I'll probably do a proper video when we get multiplayer gameplay. And there was also a shot at the beginning that said starting the demo, so there may well be a playable demo soon which will let me look more into it. But anyway, that's my rambling over with, let's get on with the other games. State of Decay 3 was the next reveal, but it didn't really give us much. Um, there was no gameplay, so I'm going to project a fair bit here. Um, the only new thing we see are zombie animals, so there's potentially a, a hunter versus hunted dynamic. Um, I thought State of Decay 2 was too heavy on the base management side of things that made you feel like you were doing chores most of the time. So this might potentially make things go down the survivalist route or maybe even the horror route, which would be cool. Um, but yeah, we don't know anything else yet. Turn 10's next project is Forza Motorsport. The demo was all in-engine footage captured on Xbox Series X and looks incredible, inc incredibly photorealistic and I think racing games are going to be the first genre to seriously merge the lines between playing a video game and just watching live TV. Especially when you're watching a trailer like this, there's no controller, there's no inputs to tell your brain that you're playing a game. 
And uh, that right there was real Formula One footage, so if I fooled you, then I proved my point. So Rare's next project, and their first since Sea of Thieves, is Everwild. This trailer didn't tell us much more than the first trailer did back at XO19 last year, but we now know it's a place where magic flows through nature, connecting every living thing, and it's about exploring a magical, magical untamed, untamed natural, natural world for you to, to explore uh, excuse and to me, just truly to lose yourself. yourself in. No, no, I, I've got it from here. Thanks. You, you had your chance to explain. I've, I've got this. It all sounds pretty hippy dippy, if you ask me, but the art style looks pretty lovely. There were two other games that were previously announced at XO19 as well, which were Tell Me Why and Grounded. The first is an episodic, story-driven adventure where two twins share memories to find out what happened to their mother. Grounded is like, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids for this generation of kids. <laughs> because, because the game looks like Fortnite. <laughs> get, get it? No. Thought that was a pretty good joke. Obsidian joined Xbox Game Pass Studios with the release of The Outer Worlds last year, and when they joined, they said that Avowed was the game they wanted to make. So expect a deep branching narrative, a multi-dimensional cast, humour mixed with darker, more serious tones, you know, all the things that make these games great. Avowed is set in the medieval fantasy world of Aeora and gave me very Elder Scrolls vibes, um, and I mean that in a good way, so I'm, I'm keen to see more of this. As Dusk Falls is labelled an interactive drama because it's far moodier than those interactive stories, I'm sure. That's what you get from a studio called Interior Slash Night. The game is set in the American Southwest and spans 30 years and tells a story about family, resilience and sacrifice, uh, mostly about asking the player to guide real flawed characters. So my guess is it's a choose your own dialogue game akin to the Telltale games, which is no bad thing. Um, it's got an interesting art style as well, although I've no idea if this is actually what the gameplay will look like or if this was just their trailer. Either way, uh, it sounds pretty good. Senua's Saga has me really pumped, so this is the sequel to Senua's Sacrifice, which in my opinion is one of the biggest sleepers on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, we didn't get much information, just that we're now moved to Iceland, um, so Nordic mythology will likely, well hopefully, still be a focus. Um, I'm going to need to play this again because I didn't think the first game could really go anywhere, like there was a sequel set up. Um, either she has, Senua has another descent into madness through her psychosis, or she's healed and she's fine and things are going to go in a new direction completely. Um, I don't want to spoil anything about the first game, though, obviously. Um, you can go check out an old review I did on the game, it was like my fourth ever video. Um, but that contains spoilers too, so watch out. Uh, maybe just go play it first, then watch my video, then watch this video again, so you're, you're caught up. Um, I'm excited for this. <laughs> okay, what else did we find? Um, Psychonauts 2 is coming, uh, using the voice and singing talents of the legendary Dewey Finn. And there were also a handful of current games confirmed as being remastered or revamped in some way for the Xbox Series X. And those games were Ori and the Will of the Wisps, The Outer Worlds, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5 and Sea of Thieves. And these games have the Xbox Smart Delivery feature, so if you own any of them on Xbox One, you will get them for free on Xbox Series X, which is pretty cool. And remember that all of these games are on Game Pass, so if you have Game Pass, you'll also get them for free on Xbox Series X, which is cool. You just need to buy the console for 500 quid, whatever it's gonna be. Okay, those are the biggest and best Xbox Series X games, in my opinion, that were covered at the Xbox Game Showcase but there were a handful of console launch exclusives too that I'll quickly cover. Uh, but honestly, these were mostly teaser trailers with not much information to go on. And quickly, what I think they mean by console launch exclusive is not that the game will launch alongside the Xbox Series X in holiday 2020, but when the game releases, it will be an Xbox exclusive for some amount of time before it gets released on other platforms. Right, here they are. Stalker 2 must be the sequel to Stalker, I guess. I knew that was a game. Uh, this looks to be set in an apocalyptic wasteland with little mutant babies. Ah, aren't they cute? Warhammer Darktide is potentially a four-person survival shooter where you face off against hordes of zombies in the Warhammer universe. If they have zombies in Warhammer, I, I wouldn't know because I'm not a virgin. 
Tetris is the game that's going to benefit from the improved processing power of the Xbox Series X the most, in my opinion. I guess I'm supposed to know what Tetris Effect Connected is because the trailer sure didn't fancy telling me. This is the gunk. A cell shaded open world RPG where your glove collects goop samples. <laughs> they were the only words I wrote in my notes when I watched this live and you know what, I don't think we need any more than that right now. There's a lot of goop samples, that's all you need to know. The medium looks to be a spooky supernatural crime thriller that's set in split dimensions or dual reality gameplay as the developer is keen to call it. These are two worlds that are rendered simultaneously, which is why it's only coming to Xbox Series X and PC, because it would probably make my little Xbox One shit itself. New Genesis Fantasy Star Online 2 is, um, uh, well, as you can see, uh, it's clearly, um, it, it's, uh, it's a new, it's a, it's a brand spanking new, um, it's another JRPG. And rounding out the list, we have Crossfire X Campaign. Now, Crossfire X is a free-to-play military multiplayer shooter that's coming soon to Xbox One and Series X, and this is the campaign. Is a campaign necessary? Well, if it's anything more than a generic futuristic military shooter campaign, then sure, but the trailer didn't give me much hope for that. Wait a minute. Single player not in Xbox Game Pass sold separately? <gasps> So this is a trailer for a game that's not coming to Game Pass. For shame, Phil Spencer. For shame. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, this video was initially going to be highlighting the games from the game showcase that were on Xbox Series X and coming to Game Pass, but it turns out they all are, which is, which is awesome, to be honest. Um, it seems like Microsoft and Xbox are really committed to video game subscriptions being the future of gaming. And that makes me feel good because that's what I built this channel around. <laughs> so uh, for those that don't know, uh, my channel covers every game on all the video game subscriptions, Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation Now, EA Origin Access, and Uplay Plus. So if you have any of those services or you're thinking of getting one or multiples of them, um, then please check out my channel. It's got lots of compilations and individual game reviews and stupid let's plays on every game on every game subscription. Um, so yeah, if you could check it out, and if you like the stuff, subscribe, leave a like on this video, and all that youtuber spiel they have to give you, um, then that would be awesome. Uh, that would mean a lot. So, but thanks for watching. Uh, see you on the next one. Cheers.